Antarctic krill from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. The Antarctic krill, Euphausia superba, is a species of krill found in the Antarctic waters of the Southern Ocean. Antarctic krill are shrimp-like invertebrates that live in large schools called swarms, sometimes reaching densities of 10,000 to 30,000 individual animals per cubic meter. They feed directly on minute phytoplankton, thereby using the primary production energy that the phytoplankton originally derived from the sun in order to sustain their pelagic open ocean life cycle. They grow to a length of 6 centimeters, weigh up to 2 grams, and can live for up to 6 years. They are a key species in the Antarctic ecosystem and are likely, in terms of biomass, the most successful animal species on the planet, approximately 500 million tons. Systematics All members of the krill order are shrimp-like animals of the crustacean superorder Eucharida. Their breastplate units, or thoracomers, are joined with the carapace with the carapace. The short length of the thoracomers on each side of the carapace makes the gills of the Antarctic krill visible to the human eye. The legs do not form a jaw structure, which differ differentiates this order from the crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. See also Euphosia superba at wiki species. Life cycle. The main spawning season of the Antarctic krill is from January through March, both above the continental shelf and also in the upper region of deep sea oceanic areas. In the typical way of all Euphosians, the male attaches a sperm package to the genital opening of the female. For this purpose, the first pleopods, legs attached to the abdomen, of the male are constructed as mating tools. Females lay 6,000 to 10,000 eggs at one time. They are fertilized as they can pass out of the genital opening by sperm liberated from spermatophores, which have been attached by the males. According to the classical hypothesis of Marr, derived from the result of the expedition of the famous British research vessel RRS Discovery, egg development then proceeds as follows. Gastrulation, development of egg in embryo, into embryo, sets in during the descent of the 0.6 millimeter eggs on the shelf at the bottom in oceanic areas in depths of two, around 2,000 to 3,000 meters. From the time the egg hatches, the first nucleus, i.e. larval stage, starts migrating toward the surface with the aid of its three pairs of legs, the so-called developmental ascent. The next two larval stages, termed second nucleus and maiden nucleus, still do not eat but are nourished by the remaining yolk. After three weeks, the little krill has finished the ascent. Growing larger, additional larval stages follow, second and third calyptopus, first to sixth versilia. They are characterized by increasing development of the additional legs, the compound eyes, and the seedy bristles. At 15 millimeters, the juvenile krill resembles the habitus of the adults. Krill reach maturity after two to three years. Like all crustaceans, krill must molt in order to grow. Approximately every 13 to 20 days, krill shed their chitin skin and leave it behind as exuvia. Food. The gut of E. superba can often be seen shining green through the animal's transparent skin, as indication that this, this species feeds prey dominantly on phytoplankton. Especially very small diatoms, 20 micrometers, which it filters from the water with a feeding basket. The glass-like shells of the diatoms are cracked in the gastric mill and then digested into the hepatopancreas. The krill can also catch and eat copepods, amphipods, and other small zooplankton. The gut forms as a straight tube. Its digestive efficiency is not very high and therefore a lot of carbon is still present in the feces. C. The biological pump below. In aquaria, krill have been observed eating each other. When they are not fed in aquaria, they shrink in size after molting, which is exceptional for animals the size of krill. 
It is likely that this is an adaptation to the seasonality of their su food supply, which is limited in the dark winter months under the ice. Filter feeding. Main article, filter feeding. The Antarctic krill manages to directly utilize the minute phytoplankton cells, which no other higher animal krill size can do. This is accomplished through filter feeding, using the krill's highly developed front legs, providing for an efficient filtering apparatus. The six thoracopods, legs attached to the thorax, form a very effective feeding basket used to collect phytoplankton from the open water. In the finest areas, the openings of the, in this basket are only one micrometer in diameter. Scanning electron microscope images of the, ama of the amazing structure can be studied here. In the movie linked to the right, the krill is hovering at a 55 degree angle on the spot. In lower food concentrations, the feeding basket is pushed through the water for over half a meter open to position, as in the in situ image below, and then the algae are combed to the mouth opening with special sea bristles on the inner side of the rhizopod. Ice algae raking. Antarctic krill can scrape off the green lawn of ice algae from the underside of the pack ice. The image to the right, taken by an ROV, shows how most krill swim in an upside-down position directly under the ice. Only a single animal, in the middle, can be seen hovering in the free water. Krill have developed special rows of rake-like seed on the, at the tips of the thoracopods and graze the ice in a zigzag fashion akin to a lawnmower. One krill can clear an area of of a square foot in about 10 minutes, 1.5 square centimeters a second. It is relatively new knowledge that the film of ice algae is very well developed over vast areas, often containing much more carbon than the whole water column below. Krill find an extensive energy source here, especially in the spring. The biological pump in carbon sequestration. The krill is a highly untidy feeder and it often spits out aggregates of phytoplankton, spitballs, containing thousands of cells stuck sticking together. It also produces fecal strings that still contain significant amounts of carbon in the glacials of the diatoms. Both are heavy and sink very fast into the abyss. This process is called the biological pump. As the waters around Antarctica are very deep, 2,000 to 4,000 meters, they must act as a carbon dioxide sink. This process exports large quantities of carbon, fixed carbon dioxide, from the biosphere and sequesters for it for about 1,000 years. If the phytoplankton is consumed by other compounds of the pelagic ecosystem, most of the carbon remains in the upper strata. This is, there is speculation that this process is one of the largest biofeedback mechanisms on the, of the planet, maybe the most sizable of all, driven by a gigantic biomass. Still more research is needed to quantify the Southern Ocean ecosystem. Biological peculiarities. Bioluminescence. Krill are often referred to as light shrimp because they can emit light produced by bioluminescent organs. These organs are located on various parts of the individual krill's body. One pair of organs at the eye stalk, see at the image of the head above, another pair on the hips of the second and seventh thoracopods, and singular organs on the four leonsternites. These light organs emit a yellow-green light periodically for up to two to three seconds. They are considered so highly developed that they can be compared with a torchlight. A concave reflector in the back of the organ and a lens in the front guide the light produced and the whole organ can be rotated by muscles. The function of these lights is not yet fully understood. Some hypotheses have suggested they serve to compensate the krill's shadow 
so that they are not visible to predators from below. Other speculations maintain that they play a significant role in mating or schooling at night. The krill's bioluminescent organs contain several fluorescent substances. The major component has a maximum fluorescence at an excitation of 355 nanometers and the emission of 510 nanometers. Escape reaction. Krill use an escape reaction to evade predators, swimming backwards very quickly by flipping their telson. This swimming pattern is also known as lobstering. Krill can reach speeds of over 60 centimeters per second. The trigger time to optical stimulus is, despite the low temperatures, only 55 milliseconds. The compound eye. Although the uses for and reasons behind the development of their massive black compound eyes remain a mystery, there is no doubt that the Antarctic krill have one of the most fantastic structures for vision seen in nature. As mentioned above, krill can shrink in size from one molt to the next, which is generally thought to be a survival strategy to adapt to scarce food supplies. A smaller body needs less energy, i.e. food. However, the animal's eyes do not shrink when this happens. The ratio between eye size and body length has thus been found to be a reliable indicator of starvation. Geographical Distribution Antarctic krill are found thronging the surface waters of the Southern Ocean. They have a circumpolar distributions, with the highest concentration found located in the Atlantic sector. The northern boundary of the Southern Ocean with its Atlantic, Pacific Ocean, and Indian Ocean sectors is defined more or less by the Antarctic Convergence, a circumpolar front where the cold Antarctic surface water submerges below the warmer subantarctic waters. This front runs roughly at 55 degrees south. For there to the continent, the Southern Ocean covers 32 million square kilometers. This is 65 times the size of the North Sea. In the winter season, more than three quarters of this area become covered by ice, whereas 24 million square kilometers become free, ice free in summer. The water temperatures range between 1.3 degrees Celsius below zero and 3 degrees Celsius. The waters of the Southern Ocean form a system of currents. Whenever there is a west wind draft, the surface strata travels around Antarctica in an easterly direction. Near the continent, the east wind drift runs con counterclockwise. At the front between both, large eddies develop, for example, in the Weddell Sea. The krill schools drift with these water masses to establish one single stock, <coughs> one single stock all around Antarctica, with gene exchange over the whole area. Currently, there is little knowledge of the precise migration patterns since individual krill cannot yet be tagged to track their movements. Position in the Antarctic Ecosystem The Antarctic krill is the keystone species of the Antarctica ecosystem and provides an important food source for whales, seals, leopard seals, fur seals, crab eater seals, squid, ice fish, penguins, albatrosses, and many other species of birds. <sighs> crab eater seals have even developed special teeth as an adaptation as an adap as an adaptation to catch this abundant food source. Its most unusual multi-lobed teeth enable this species to see krill from the water. Its, its dentition looks like a perfect strainer, but how it operates in detail is still unknown. Crab eaters are the most abundant seal in the world. Their diet consists to 98% of E. superba. These seals consume over 93 million tons of krill each year. Leopard seals have developed similar teeth, 45% krill in diet. 
All seals consume 63 to 130 million tons, all whales 34 to 43 million tons, birds 15 to 20 million tons, squid 30 to 100 million tons, and fish 10 to 20 million tons, adding up to 152 to 313 million tons of krill consumption each year. The size step between krill and its prey is unusually large. Generally, it takes three or four steps for the, from the 20 micrometer tiny phytoplankton cells to a krill-sized organism via small copods, large copods, mycids to five centimeter fish. The next size step in the food chain to whales is also enormous, a phenomenon, a phenomenon only found in the Antarctic ecosystem. E. superba lives only in the Southern Ocean. In the North Atlantic, Meganis M. Norwegica and the Pacific Euphalus of Pacific are the, are the dominant species. Biomass and Production The Antarctic krill's biomass is estimated to be between 125 to 725 million tons making E. superba the most successful animal species on the planet. It should be noted that all of that it should be noted that all animals visible to the naked eye, some biologists speculate that ants provide the largest biomass, but this speculation adds up hundreds of different species. <sighs> While others speculate that it could be the copods but this too would be the sum of many hundreds of species that exist over the planet. To get an impression of the biomass of E. superba against that of other species, the total non-krill yield from all world fisheries, finfish, shellfish, cephalopods, and plankton is about 100 million tons per year, whilst, whilst estimates of the Antarctic krill production are between 13 million to several billion tons per year. The reason the Antarctic krill are able to build up such a high biomass in production is that the water around the icy Antarctic continent harbor, one of the largest plankton assemblages in the world, possibly the largest. The ocean is filled with phytoplankton as the water rises from the depths to the light flooded surface, it brings nutrients from all of the world's oceans back into the photic zone where they are once again available to living organisms. Thus, primary production, the conversion of sunlight into our organic biomass, the foundation of the food chain, has an, unus has an annual carbon fixation of between 1 and 2 grams per square meter in the open ocean. Close to the ice, it can reach 30 to 50 grams per square meter. These values are not outstandingly high compared to very productive areas like the North Sea or upwelling regions, but the area over which it takes place is just enormous. <sighs> Even compared to other large primary producers such as rainforests. In addition, during the austral summer, there are many hours of daylight to feel to the process. All these factors make the plankton and the grill a critical part of the planet's eco-cycle. Decline with shrinking and pack ice. There are concerns that the Antarctic krill's overall biomass has been declining rapidly over the last few decades. Some scientists have speculated that this value being as high as 80 percent. This could be caused by the reduction of the pack ice zone due to consequence of global warming. The graph on the right depicts the rising temperatures to the southern ocean and the loss of pack ice on an inverted scale over the last 40 years. <laughs> Antarctic krill, especially in the early stages of development, seem to need the pack ice structures in order to have a fair chance of survival. The pack ice provides natural cave-like features which the krill uses to evade their predators. In the years of low pack ice conditions, the krill tend to give way to the south, a barrel-shaped free-floating filter feeder that also grazes on plankton.
Fisheries, main article, krill fishery. The fishery of the Antarctic krill is on the order of 100,000 tons per year. The major catching nations are Japan and Poland. The products are used largely in, largely in Japan as a delicacy and worldwide as an animal food and fish bait. Krill fisheries are difficult Krill fisheries are difficult to operate in two important respects. First, a krill net needs to have very fine meshes, producing a very high drag, which generates a bow wave that deflects the krill to the sides. Second, fine meshes tend to clog very fast. Additionally, fine nets also tend to be very delicate and the first krill nets tore apart while fishing through krill schools. Yet another problem is bringing the krill catch on board. When the full net is hauled out of the water, the organisms compress each other, resulting in great loss of the krill's liquid. Experiments have been carried out to pump, pump, experiments have been carried out to pump krill while still in water through a large tool through a large tube on board. Special krill nets also are currently under development. The processing of the krill must be very rapid since the catch deteriorates within several hours. Processing aims are splitting the muscular hind part from the front part and separating the chitin armor in order to produce frosted products and concentrate powders. Its high protein and vitamin content makes krill quite suitable for both direct human consumption and the animal feed industry. Future Visions and Ocean Engineering Despite the sc scarce knowledge available about the whole Antarctic ecosystem, large-scale experiments involving krill ha are already being taken performed. Despite the scarce knowledge available about the whole Antarctic ecosystem, Large-scale experiments involving krill are already being performed to increase carbon sequestration in vast areas of the Southern Ocean. There are plenty of nutrients, but still, the phytoplankton does not grow much. These areas are termed HNLC, high nutrient, low carbon. This, the phenomenon is called the Antarctic Paradox and occurs because iron is missing. <sighs> Relatively small injections of iron from research vessels trigger, trigger very large blooms covering v many miles. The hope is that such large-scale exercises will draw down carbon dioxide as compensation for the burning of fossil fuels. Krill is the key player in this process, collecting the minute plankton cells which fixed carbon dioxide and converting the substance to rapidly sinking carbon in the form of spitballs and fecal strings. The vision is that in the future a fleet of tankers would circle the southern seas injecting iron so that this relatively unknown animal might help keep cars and air conditioners running. Notes Note 1. This species is often misspelled E U P H A S I A S U P E R B A or E U P A U S I A S U P E R B A. See also Kaidosin. External links Euphosia Superba from Marine Bio. Virtual microscope of Antarctic krill for an interactive tour of their morphology and behavior, along with other peer reviewed information. High resolution images at wiki stores. Krill fights for survival as sea mice melts from the NASA Earth Observatory. Antarctic wildlife at risk from overfishing, experts say, from National Geographic News, August 5, 2003. Diary of the RRS James Clark Ross, giving a popular introduction to the Antarctic krill. Less krill for predators in the Southern Ocean, from the British Antarctic Survey. See also, Climate Road Touches Blue Whales, from the BBC, July 19, 2001. A Time to Krill, Extensive Bibliography.
This recording was based on the edit dated September 3rd, 2005 at 744 UTC.